Round two of the Celestria pits my brother in flames, Shady Penguin, against Luna's strongest soldier, Caleb.exe. Between the searing destruction of fire and foreboding presence of Lunar, the stars have aligned for an exciting clash, as quickly as they've aligned for Elestral's fourth set, Moonrise. I'm most excited for the Nobby line. Doppelgator is going to be a force in itself. And have you read Necrolith? Spoiled Fruit? Hurricane? The meta won't be the same once Moonrise releases, so visit Shop Illustrials on November 15th and be the first to pre-order. I'm ordering a deck profile with the premier sushi delicacy of Drag King. Let's see if Caleb's deck has what I ordered. What is up my Drag Kings, Drag Queens, and squids of every Nexus form? It's Caleb here from the Illustronauts, and today we are facing off against Shady Penguin, the Firecaster. Now, I was able to actually go ahead and see his match when he played it, and honestly, <laughs> it was really scary. Uh, and so that's led me to really have to consider uh, what I'm playing this week. And so let's go ahead and let's quickly run through what we've got for you today. We've got our kids and our squids. We're running two Drakid, three Eddie, and then of course we've got our two Draking and the one Kerbis to go alongside it. Uh, very standard. We're playing Draking Kerbis, and Eddie's a good guard and. The goal, really, this deck wants to go second, so I don't feel too bad if we go second. We'll take first anyway, because we can slow roll our game plan uh, and just expend to draw if we don't have a good cast. And the reality is that we probably won't have very many good casts for a turn one, because we have Tadpuff, we've got Gloombat, we've got Dratagua, Veritaqua, and Spectaris. Basically, all of these are good cards for playing second. Again, we'll choose to go first if we have the option, because there's no reason to not just take that advantage of drawing and Google, being able to set up our back row to interact with Shady's uh, plays. We're on the Dratagor. You will see we're on a, a very interesting water package here. I think these these cards kind of speak for themselves. Tadpuff turbos out our Kerbis uh, and our Drakang if we need it. Gloombat can do the same thing while also being a utility for popping back row. And then Spectaris is an option for just hitting over a uh, thing in general, being a solid beater. These are some unique cards though. We're playing a heavier water water package this go around. Dratagua is because the last time that Shady played, he was on a burn deck. He's on the Suvatuga burn and that scares me a lot. And so Dratagua is meant to just hope to keep pace if he's on burn and if he can be sighted out for a lot of other things uh, or kept in, even if he isn't on burn, it's just a solid cast as well. It plays us slow. It's a four defender. Then we can ascend over it for Draking after generating value. Veritaqua is because a lot of these stall type things like Vesubatuga, really big asses. Vesubatuga is an eight. We can't hit over that with a Draken. We can hit over with a Kur uh, Kuribus, but we only have one of those and it's a little bit more convoluted to get there potentially. Veritaqua though, will guarantee that we can get over it and we can generate advantage if he's sitting on some guys that we're just not able to get over super easily. Uh, so we're running those in main. We're trying to consider what he's on. The reality is that if he's on Fire Nexus, I'm not super worried. We can take tempo really fast. We can swing really hard. That is what Draken is really good at doing. He's playing aggro. He plays a slower strategy like Burn, like the Suvatuga. That's where I think this deck will start to struggle. But onto our runes, we're running the one of Artemis, the one of Resting. These are our two one ofs. They're both really solid. We've got the three Ambrosia. We've got triple Rock and Hard Place. Can't go anywhere without it. Keep it on me. And then triple Nectar of the Gods. And these are invoke runes for the deck. Uh, we're trying to draw deep. We're trying to special cast out our guys. We're trying to throw our reverse stellars under the desk. And we're trying to play hard and hit hard. We then have our counter rune suite, which is just standard. We got Poison Tip, Gorgon's Gaze, and Shield of Achilles. We're not running Tsunami. You'll see why in a second. So that is our counter rune lineup. Um, the spirit deck, super, super simple. We're running 11 Lunar, and we're running 9 Water in our uh, our spirit deck. With that, we are into our, spear, our side deck, not our spirit deck. We're running... Triple Sluggle, if we really feel like he's pressuring super hard with the burn stuff, we can go into that, siding out Dratagua. We've got Double Nobby, if we feel like he's on a beater strategy or Fire Nexus just to hit over things that leave an attack position. We've got Dense Fog for Nexus specifically, and also Vesubatuga because it can pre prevent his burn effects and heal effects before he's able to use them. Uh, we've got Triple Cryoblast because it kills the heart. The thing that I'm scared, the most scared of, I think, in his deck is exactly Kindleo and uh, Necrof, and this kills both of them. Then we have uh, triple Tsunami, and then we have our Flurmines for the Cryoblast. This deck has felt killer. It felt killer last week. I'm confident that's going to do well this week. We're probably going to be running something very similar every single week that you see me, because uh, the reality is that I just don't know if Lunar is going to be able to produce something that is as consistent and as scary as Draken. You know that, and that's why we, you know, King King stays on top, baby. King stays on top. 
we're gonna, we're gonna go another week with my my glorious pineapple. So see you in the clash. Go, let's go pineapple squad. I don't know. I, I don't have a closing thing to say. A straightforward list, similar to what he played in round one. But his knowledge of Shady's Vesuva Tuga deck from round one has him bringing in Veritaqua to the main deck, an Elestral that suppresses and destroys any defense Elestral it battles. The perfect tool to out Vesuva Tuga. Hopefully, Shady cooked up a new strategy this week. We made it into the top 16 of the Illustrated Season 2, and we have our deck profile here for our match that I'm about to be playing. Uh, we'll go over our Fire Elestrals first, as that seems most appropriate, because I'm in the Fire Pantheon. We've got Triple Astrabbit. That's right, Triple Astrabbit. And then we have Triple Necroft, who will more often than not almost never have Fire equipped to it. We have a single Lumeru that ends our Fire Elestrals, by the way. And then we have Triple Viscerous, which is, you know, I'm kind of liking Earth a lot. I'm not tied to the Earth Pantheon, but I could dabble. I could be persuaded. Uh, up, next, up next, we have two Vertolith, two Sakurasaur, which is a card that I don't think sees play at all, and then two Lodagon. So I'll talk about the game plan after the deck list, but that's our entire Elestral lineup. Then when it comes to our runes, it gets a little bit weirder. We have our one Mandatory Hephaestus. We've got one Earthquake, because you can, and then I believe we have one Laurels, because you can. I think those are all my single uh, when it comes to our runes. And then we have triple poison tipped arrow. Very nice. Triple Gorgon's gaze. Very excellent. We have double shield of Achilles. We got triple ambrosia. We got double ambrosia cornucopia. We have double foilo forest. Uh, and then we have what I think is a sleeper pick. We have triple chains of Prometheus. I think this card is the best thing fire has going for it right now. So we are going triple chains. I don't think I'll be able to get this all in the picture. And then our last one is triple nectar of the gods. And that that is our entire deck. Now, when it comes to our side deck, our side deck is as follows. We've got two Golden Fleece, two Luminate to go along with it. Then we've got Triple Eruption. We've got double Emfrix. We've got double Vesivatuga. We have a single Vertolith, potentially to bring it to three. We've got double Pandasin and then a single Divine Blessing. That is our entire deck, uh, except for our spirits. Our starting spirits is just going to be uh, 11 Fire and nine Earth which uh, you know what, because we have to. Here's our nine earth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And when it comes to the game plan for this deck, uh, I really want to let Sakura Sore shine. So I'm running triple Nectar of the Gods, triple Nog. And the idea is that if I have to mulligan, I will, but I'd love to open up with at least one Nectar of the Gods and a Vertolith, which is a lot to ask for since I'm only running two Vertolith now. I was toying with it. Might run three in the second battle if we break up and don't see it early on. But the idea is like, hey, if you can spend your resources early and then get them back, turn one and get a Vertolith on the board, that's that's massive. It's almost worth running three in the main board, but uh, this is just what I came up with at this point. After Vertolith out, it's a pretty hard body to deal with. It's seven defense. If we have Folio Forest out, it's nine defense. Very, very difficult. But really, I'm just going to end up ascending Vertolith into Sacrosaur and hopefully start drawing cards with that eight or ten defense with the, the battlefield out. Lodagon is here as like the actual, okay, what am I going to draw into? What is going to make this deck good? And what ultimately is going to make the deck good is by getting Lodagon out combined with Ash Rabbit and recycling those Embrace to pop cards and keep myself healthy. This deck feels a little bit more mid to late game where it really shines. It probably loses to rush down aggro pretty hard. I've never versed Lunar before, so I'm gonna do my best. This is my game plan going into it. I'm hoping Lunar plays a little bit of a slower game because I think in a tempo game, I will see more resources with Sakura Sore than my opponent will see. Well, uh, it's certainly a deck. I like the confidence to run Sakura Sore, which is Nectar of the Gods on Lays. But there are a lot of two cost Celestrals here. I worry about Shady's ability to build his combo in time. And even then, will it stand up to the constant offensive pressure of Lunar? The clash begins and Caleb is going first. Not exactly what Shady wants to see, knowing that he has a strategy that's going to take time to be built up. But Caleb is already ready for the defensive plays. Him getting to go first is absolutely perfect for him. Nectar of the Gods starts him off immediately and then we have an expend to draw. I assume that Caleb here is just looking to build up resources. Knowing that Shady played a defensive strategy last time, it's likely that he's just going forward wanting to build up his offensive line so that way he can go after the defense the defense nectar of the gods full art as well coming from a shady penguin and now we have a cast of a neck rough an earth enchanted neck rough i guess not wanting to go with the fire but you do have more fire and you have more earth elestrals i imagine that it might be best to have properly enchant 
the neck off this turn, but it, it gets the damage all the same. Shady has a lead, 17 to 15, going into the uh, turn three. Eddie comes out to switch neck off the defense, and Gorgon's gaze is right there with that beautiful holographic Vipiro art. I think that's one of the best Vipiro arts out there. Um, but that is going to stop the Eddie a lot. Oh, even, even Caleb is a little confused right now, and so am I. I was not expecting a lot of God in hand. If there is an Ambrosia or in either one, we saw uh, Ambrosia Cornucopia as well, and there is. He gets a draw. He gets a pop, which will likely go after the back row. Runs over the Eddie for one point of damage, and Shield of Achilles gets destroyed. A lot of spirits being spent on Shady side, and no back row to help him out either. So spirit count does go in Killer's favor this time. But going into this turn, I mean, a lot of gone seven, eight in offense is going to be rough. But this right here tells you what is going to go on. Tad Puff coming out and the Curibus. I was actually wondering if it would be Drag King, but the Curibus comes out there unimpeded with no back row, immediately runs over the Lodagon. That is a huge commitment coming out from Shady that was gone as quickly as it came. 11 to 12 spirit count right here and it looks like we have an expend to draw this is the problem i saw with shady strategy we do have the earthquake perfect i don't know if that came from the draw or not but the earthquake here was perfect timing so now both of them lost big two cost the lessers were back to a neutral game state 11 to 9 spirit count in caleb's favor going into this turn and immediately we have a specterist properly enchanted coming out there which means that any illustrious combats will be suppressed and raising specterist's attack up to five one back row accompanies the specterist as well and we get in for one point of damage uh, Shady, not in a bad situation, but is definitely going to want to see more back row sooner than later. But looking at his list here, I mean, he has some options, but he already spent the gaze, so he only has four potent ones out here. And the poison tip arrow, you dare put the stellar PTA on screen, editor? What? What? You know no one has pulled that yet. Now you got me feeling some type of way. But this rabbit is going to come out, and it looks like he just chose three spirits. So we're essentially healing up a spirit. And a rabbit is going to be destroyed in the end phase from the poison tip arrow. Hey, I need to know, y'all. Of all of the staple full arts that debuted in Daybreak, which one is your favorite? I am still trying to get poison tip arrow for myself. Caleb having three just makes me sad. Not for him, but for me. In any case, Gloomback comes out there, no back row, so I guess he's giving up on the opportunity to really want to wait for a special cast of Gloomback. And I really don't blame him, because Shady has set one back row this entire game so far, and is now dealt two points of damage. I think he's trying to figure out which two are going to be sent. Oh no, we have a Nectar of the Gods, so the cost is already spent and now Nectar. But having to do this this late in the game with so little spirit count, especially an element that has a really difficult time healing, is not great. But we do have another Ash Rabbit, a five defense body. If the Veritaqua is in Caleb's hand, this is not going to be great for Shady. Um, he is going to be choosing, I think he might have just chose uh, spirits as well. I missed the target. Um, on the from the caster there, but regardless, this is going to go back to Caleb here, and now we have an instance of Drag King coming out. And Drag King, well, this is just kind of rude. Drag King is going to be more than enough to get over a Shrabbit and even steal it, cast it against his opponent, and hit him back in for two. Absolutely great board state for Caleb here, and that's the power of Drag King that many people didn't realize at first. Not only, not only is it a card that is a d strong body in and of itself, but it by effect gets more illustrials on your board. This went from a 2 1 board to a 3 0 board, and all the damage going in. It looks like Shady is going to be scooping it up as well. He just picked up his that rabbit from Caleb, but still, that game was really exciting. Uh, for it was a decent back and forth, but it goes back to what I saw from Shady's deck profile. He didn't have much to run on besides defensive plays. And while defense is always good when applicable, it seems as though you're more 
you're more applicable to have a better time in the left rules if your defense is a strong offense. We'll see what the side deck can do for Shady going to the next game. And Vera Taco was not revealed. If Vesuva Chuga comes in, that may be all she has. Clash two of potentially three, and Shady Pinger will be going first. And don't tell me that's an expender draw immediately. Oh, oh, is it a neck of the gods? Oh no, that was a mulligan. Oh, they both mulligan. Okay, you know what? If both players mulligan, it's not as feels bad as you would like it to be. Or as, you know, you thought it would be. An earth casting neck buff coming out there. We already saw what Shady did last time. So Caleb's absolutely gonna be wary of what that neck buff can ascend to. Nectar of the Gods, and I think Shady is kind of killing him. So like, where is my Nectar? Where is my Nectar? He's absolutely running five copies of it in his deck, including Sakura Sora. So where is it at? Who knows? But Nectar of the Gods is going to come out and Drag Kid with no back roll from Shady. It's absolutely going to be just exactly what he needs to get over this neck buff. It's going to swap the stats with the neck buff and run over it immediately. So. While board, pre while board presence is in Kayla's favor, spirit count is in Shady's favor. It's not exactly out. He's not exactly out of the woods yet. Okay, we have to expend the draw. It's not looking great here. Let's the fire has a, it, It's an ember. It is an ember just peering out there at the distance. Shady dropping his head in mental defeat as a second nectar of the gods. They are not in his favor. All the card advantage is in Caleb's hand right now. Two back row. Is that an expend to draw as well? I'm assuming, one, like similar to Clash 1, is looking for his opportunity to just run over his opponent when offense or defense starts getting set. Shady Penguin is adjusting. Look like he has five or six cards in his hand. And we may have a cast here in a Viserys. Okay, huge reveal by Shady here. He definitely wasn't expecting, or Caleb wasn't expecting that. And for Louis Forrest as well, I would not feel confident in this because essentially all you're saying is you have to answer this and Gorgon's Gaze is going to be the perfect answer. Once again, the Daybreak Full Art. Caleb, please share. <laughs> Um, Eddie is going to come out, so that back row needs to be Gorgon's Gaze again right now. But Shady's reeling in distress does not uh, so confident. Will that be a shield? A shield would us also help save Viserys right now as well. Uh, Drakkid is going to wait, Drakkid's running in. Oh, he swapped the stats, right? Drakkid is going to be the one, one to run in. Viserys goes down, unfortunately. And while Spirit Count is in Shady's favor by three. Board presence, Caleb has not had a sweat this entire time. So hopefully Hephaestus in that Elestral Zone in the top right can really just channel energy to Shady for his next few draws. But we have an expend to draw here. An unfortunate spirit count for an unfortunate board state for Shady Penguin. Uh, we have a cast out of Veritaqua. Now this is another major reveal. Uh, Shady is going to be seeing real talk and knows that, okay, my defensive plays is not going to be yet. And Ambrosia as well, healing Caleb up a uh, net uh, two, bringing back two water and uh, lunar spirits. So we have two Leviathans and Outloon, and then three in, and immediately board presence is gone, spirit adv advantage is gone. I, we've only seen him cast out two Elestrals, and they were easily dispatched each time. I cannot imagine, like this slow burn strategy that Shady has implemented, ironically enough, it doesn't work for an element such as fire. Uh, we have an Ambrosia coming out as well, that's very good. An option to bring back with an Ash Rabbit as well, um, that's like one of the most ed most easiest, oh, oh, I didn't even notice Luminate, wait a minute. Oh, from the side, okay, yeah, 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 okay, all right, let's see you, Mr. Mr. Penguin. Bring him back to the solar, but we have the Drag King Reverse Stellar from Shatterstar's Lunar. You can still buy packs from Shatterstar's Lunar on shopalestrals.com, by the way. So if you're looking to grab that or maybe even the one of 10 Stellar Drag King, go roll your dice. I'm sure a link is in the description. But in any case, uh, we have three spirit or oh, four spirit damage coming out. Oh, we have a shield. Never mind. Spending the spirits that would have been lost on Dragon to return it to the hand. Not a bad trade for Shady. Nine to five spirit count right now, and he needs something big. 
Um, the oh, he's paying. The Floyd Forest went to the underworld. I'm not exactly sure why, but the Nectar of the Gods finally comes through for Shady Penguin, and he gets to draw two cards, two Elect uh, two spirits left in the spirit deck as he casts out Viceris, but Poison Tipped Arrow is going to come out here. So he's going to drop Ambrosia. Is he going to spin from his spirit deck? I believe he did. Yes, he did spin from his uh, spirit deck, bringing him back up to four. So now the situation is, oh, it looks like he decided to crash the Veritaqua. Oh, okay, so that's why he brought back the Illuminates. He is playing the Golden Fleece as well, protecting him from destruction. So now the Poison Tip Arrow, I'm assuming, will be paid out here. Uh, so now he gets to keep the Vice, so it's not a bad situation for him right now. But another Eddie is going to come out. Is there a Gorgon's Gaze for Shady right now? But even if there is, he doesn't have the Spirit Count to play it. Wait. Wait a minute, I thought the forest went to the underworld. Something went wrong there, I'm very confused. But what? The Gorgon's Gaze! And then still got beaten by the Cryoblast. An unfortunate hand for Shady could not get out the gates. Every time he took a step, the bat, the big boots just stomped right on him. All the bugs from Earth was not allowed. He did cast out the Latagon, but Sakurasaur wasn't seen. Vertilith wasn't seen. I feel, I would love to know the hands that he had, but I feel like Shady's deck just wasn't fast enough to, in the casting department to really deal with what Caleb brought. Congratulations to Caleb for moving on to round three, top eight of Illustrious Season 3. Make sure you're subscribed so you do not miss out on the next clash. And of course, visit shopillustrious.com so you can get your Moonrise pre-orders in on November 15th.